Hello, so today we have a RX 580 that is defective. Um, the owner said uh, he can't load the driver or it won't enter the, uh, it, it won't enter Windows with the drivers installed. That is a classic sign for memory problems and I'll try it out later but I guess it will be a memory issue. And in the YouTube channel from Tech Cemetery, uh, he found a Chinese site where you can um, tell from the artifacts when loading Windows which memory bank is corrupted. And um, I tried it out today, see how, how well it works or it doesn't work. Uh, apart from that, the card is pretty basic. It has been worked on. Um, you can see it here, the, these um, seals are broken, although that doesn't mean too much. But also um, the plastic here, here, here um, is a little bit melted, so don't like to see that. Anyways, I'm going to put it into my test rig and see what kind of picture it outputs and how it looks. The card is in the test rig and I powered it on and let's see what it does. So the first bio screen is fine, um, that's expected, but the real test is how Windows will behave, or rather the driver. And yeah, you can see here um, artifacting, and if we um, stop the picture, the, uh, the position where these stripes are, are telling where, um, which memory channel is faulty. Going from that, we can exchange these memory modules, or at least that's the theory bit. In this case, um, I suspect it's the uh, memory ch channel C, since you can see it's like one off from the middle or from the uh, spinning dots thingy in the middle. It's like one compartment off. And uh, it's, as you can see in the picture, it's B, A, C, D, or the channels are B, A, C, D. And um, yeah, so. Memory channel C, we are going to replace that. So, as you could see, it's most likely the memory bank C that is bad on this card, judging by the artifacting. So, uh, yeah, let's take it apart and have a look at it. Right now, I don't know what kind of memory is. Um, installed in this, also how it looks on the inside, but we will see that. So as I mentioned earlier, this card has been worked on and obviously the seller didn't tell me that and he also, yeah. It's a mess. Anyways, as you can see here, um, the electrolytic have been burned. Um, I'll show it in a picture, but here, this cap here is crooked. Um, it's barely, barely soldered onto the pad. And also this one is pretty nasty, but it's not just them. This electrolytic has been burned. As well as this one. Now, all these um, chips here, here, these are face drivers or um, face doublers. So, I don't know why they have been working there. So, all these components here, uh, core voltage. So, that's not an issue on this card, or at least now it is. Now, my theory is they either didn't know what they were doing, they just uh, fucked around with it or um, there was an issue with the core voltage that has been solved but they couldn't solve the memory issue. The memory banks, um, as you can see, there are eight chips and two chips are one bank or one channel and um, in our case it's C and you always start with, um, with A, A, B, C, D and it's a 1, a 0, b1, b0, c1, c0, d1, d0. You always start like 
or you make your right hand turn usually. So that means our most likely culprits are these two chips here. And yeah, so I'm going to change them. So what do you, I'll just show it on a, uh, on a picture, but it's um, SK Hynix uh, memory. I do have the correct memory. However, it's from not from a graphics card. It's from a main uh, laptop mainboard that died. It had severe um, water damage. But I'm hopeful that this memory will still work. But um, we'll see after we exchange it. So right now I will desolder two modules, reball them. Then remove the, uh, the defective modules from the RX 570 and then put it back on. And to remove um, the memory chips, I tend to also not use the, um, the nozzle on my hot air station. So remove that and just use it without any reason for that is so I get a bigger or wider um, hot air stream so it can cover more or less the whole chip. Uh, temperature wise uh, I'll desolder it at 420 and 110 liters low. Now let's um, remove the defective chips. And one thing that I didn't mention earlier is um, it doesn't need to be these chips that is the issue. It could also be from the memory controller on the die itself. And if that is the case, uh, this card is gone. It's a four parts card only then, or a donor card, because um, it wouldn't be, yeah, maybe feasible, but um, not economically uh, justifiable to uh, swap the core, especially not for a card like this. It's a fairly low end card, no point in changing the core for this. But yeah, I will now desolder these two chips 
that we suspect to be defective. So again, to check again, this is A, B, C, and D. And we want to change the Cs. Now, I did some uh, resistance measurements earlier off camera, and I, it's not the the memory voltage rail is not shorted, and um, so it will be it would be hard to track down which one is actually effective of these two, and there is a possibility. Uh, there is a tool on Linux where you can do that, but you have to restart all the time, and it's frankly easier to just change out both chips and hope for the best. So let's do it. So now the pads are cleaned. Um, actually, you should um, wick it up the old so all of the old solar, but um, I tend to not do that because the danger here is that um, you rip out the pad. And for me, it worked out just um, diluting the old solder with um, leaded solder and um, then put it straight back on without actually wicking all of the old solder away and then retin it. But that's my, how should I say, experience, not really the way you should do it. So now I clean some of the plugs. Then heat it up again. Now uh, you could uh, have seen how it jumped into place. We heat a little bit more, but that should be good now. Next one. And we're done. Now I'll do a quick resistance measurement to see if um, if I misaligned it. Um, the resistance will be fairly low since the card is still hot, but um, it just shouldn't be like that short, like zero point something ohms. So um, the card has cooled a bit down. It's still lightly warm to the touch but not hot anymore and um, when I measure the resistance I get 23 ohms which is fine it's still rising that's okay I also cleaned up uh, the worst of the mess and I uh, redid the soldering that we just looked on earlier um, I didn't already exchange the electrolytics and all that because first I want to see if it runs and to do that, I need to partially reassemble the card. So we still have a signal that is good. It's very good. However, the two tests will be if the driver initializes and um, then later on if it's stable yeah no good
This was a bit anticlimactic, I guess. And as you've seen, it's still the same issue with um, the artifacting and the artifacts are still on the same spot. I have a couple of theories about it. So the first one and the worst one would be that the memory controller is, is dead or partially dead. In that case, well, yeah, it's done. Um, the second one, I could have, it's po very possible that the memory that I um, pulled from this um, water damaged laptop board is defective, could be. Off camera, I exchanged these with the other two modules that were on the board and it's the same issue. So same artifacting and then the computer crashes. A third option is that I made a mistake by with identifying the, the channel. Although, according to the picture, it was the right channel, I guess, but yeah, you never know. Anyways, um, I think it's enough for this video and I'll do another one where I re um, revisit this card. I will, I have some options, maybe exchange all the memory for 8 gigabytes, Samsung that I have in stock because I don't have any more of these SK Hynix 4 gigabytes um, memories. Uh, so I could ex do that. I could um, we could look at the BIOS. Maybe clocking it significantly down would um, make it usable again. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, um, think about subscribing. Uh, I'll definitely do an update on this. Um, if you liked it, uh, please like, share, subscribe, and all that. Anyways, um, thank you for watching and have a nice day.